The Sega Astro City Mini is a neat little arcade cabinet. Mine's been on the shelf, and it needs a bit of a dusting. Dustin Timberlake. But you may not know that Batacera has been released for the Astro City Mini. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install and set it up. Welcome to Team Pandora. We're going to need an Astro City Mini, a 16GB USB stick, but we recommend a 32 or 64, the more the merrier and a USB-A to a USB Mini-B cable. It needs to be capable of data transfer, otherwise this won't work. We'll also need a PC. We'll be using a Windows computer. The first thing we'll do is go to the ACM CFW GitHub. Scroll down until we see the Astro City Mini, and then scroll down even more until we see the assets. Now I found the ass, ets, we should click on the arrow. Now to download these two files. Let's click this, and save it to your hard disk drive. Same for the other one. Now I'll need Banana Etcher. This is an image burning tool. I'll use this to put Batacera onto the USB stick. So let's download this. Anyway, it's fine. And once downloaded, load it up. Click this button here. And now click the larger file, which is Batacera Dokaduk. Insert the USB stick into your computer. Select target, and now select your USB stick. Go down to select one, click it, and then flash. If you get a pop-up, hit the yes button. Now this will extract, then copy the Batocera image onto the USB stick. It may take around 30 minutes, so it might be time for a cup of tea and biscuits. If you're certain it's copied on okay, skip the validation. In order for our computer to link to the Astro City Mini, we'll need to install these drivers. So first go to the Zedic website. Scroll down a little until we see the download link. There we go. We'll also do the same with a classic driver. Some of you may know this from other various hacks. So we'll click this, save it to our computer, and let's install. To install these is very simple and straightforward. Just double click, press yes. Uh, do we need to check it for updates? Nah. Now I'll click install WCID driver. Once done, click close, and I close the window. Next up, classic driver. When you see the scary message, press yes, and then allow it to install. When done, safely eject your USB stick, then insert into port two of your Astro City Mini. Then insert your USB cable, one end in the Astro City Mini, and the other in your PC. Well now extract this file, right click, extract to somewhere, then go into the folder that was made. And again. So all these files here are for Windows, Linux, and Mac. But as we're on Windows, we're going to double click on this batch file here. Now ignore everything that's written on the screen, then push any key. Where's the any key? Now the computer's waiting for a connection from our Astro City Mini. So now, switch it on. With any luck, our computer should detect it. Push a key. And now push another key on your keyboard to patch the bootloader. This here allows us to run custom firmware from the USB port 2 at the back of the machine. If there's no USB stick in the port, it'll run stock firmware. This also backs up your system in case you want to recover. So all we need to do now is sit back and wait. Or you could go get another cup of tea. Ooh. It's now going to create a backup and ready the custom firmware. And that's better ser installed. But there is a problem. Our controls are completely messed up. If you press the start button, then somehow navigate to the control settings, then push the OK button. Um, which button is it? It's this one here. The center middle button is OK. So push that, and again, and then hold it to configure these controls. Then push all the buttons it asks for. So bottom middle, bottom left, 
top middle, top left, yellow right, yellow left, up, down, left, right, top right, bottom right, then we want to skip all of these, so just hold the button down until it skips. Except for the hotkey, push the left yellow button for this. And now we're configured. If your screen's rotated like this, push start and then go down to system settings. System rotation. Switch this to 90 degrees. Push back a few times. Let it do its thing. And we're good to go. If you don't like the look of the video intro, we can change it out. So go down to system settings and then splash setting. Change this to Badacera splash image. Now on boot it'll load up the picture rather than the video. At stock we get a few games installed. Let's try one. Fix it Felix Jr. on the C64. Absolute ball sacks. It didn't work. Let's try another. Old Towers. Now this is awesome. If you want to exit the game, hold the hotkey which is select and push start. This will bring you back to the games list. Let's try another game. Doom. So there's a nice little collection of free games, but I want to add some. We tried this Wi-Fi dongle, and this Wi-Fi dongle, but it just wouldn't connect. You need to have a Wi-Fi dongle with one of these chipsets. On Amazon we can see which chip is in each dongle, but for those that are compatible, they're a little expensive. I'm not paying $10 for that. There's another here that's slightly cheaper, that should be compatible. But we're absolute cheapskates, and AliExpress it is. There is another way of getting ROMs onto the USB stick. We need to install the mini tool partition wizard, then insert your USB stick to your PC. Load up the partition wizard and let it detect all your drives. And from here you should be able to find your Batasera disk. There it is. So the problem is share is an ext4 which is a Linux partition. Windows can't read this so we're going to right click here, then go up to format. We're going to make it readable in both Windows and Linux. So what we're going to do is change the file system. So click here and then xfat followed by OK. It's done nothing yet, so to get it moving and grooving, we need to press Apply, and then Yes. It may take a little time, depending on the size of your drive, and you'll get a message once it's finished. Click OK, and now safely eject. Stick it in USB port 2, and load up Batacera. Once it's loaded, shut it down, then reinsert it to your PC. Now will be able to see the drive and its contents, but before we add games, we need to still fix our buttons. Back in the ACM CFW GitHub, scroll down to this section and highlight the following text. Right click and copy. Now go into the share drive, system, and right click batacera.conf. I like to use Notepad++ for this, as it works very well with Linux files. Scroll down to the very bottom. There we go. Click, enter, right click, and then paste. Now save the file by clicking the disk. That's our control sorted. So now let's move on to adding files. Copy your BIOS files into the BIOS folder. To find out more information of what's needed, check out the Batacera Linux wiki. Find the system you like to add, then find BIOS. It'll give you the BIOS file name that's needed, as well as the MD5 checksum. This is the BIOS file that they recommend, and you can use an MD5 check tool to find out that you have the correct file. Others may work, but it's a toss of the coin. So you put your BIOS files in the BIOS folder here, and for games, find a folder called ROMs. Each system is separated by their own folder. Find one you want to add games to, and then copy in your files. For example, if you want to add some PlayStation games, find the PSX folder, and then copy in your games. If you want more information, check this little file here. If you loaded up our games list now, this is how it'll look. But if you want to add videos, screenshots, or box art, we can use Scraper. Go to scraper.net, and download it for your system of choice. 
We're using Windows, so I'm going to click this, and then download for Windows. We'll also need to make a free account at screenscraper.fr, then load up Scraper. Click the wizard, then at the top, type in your screen scraper, username and password. Once validated, press next. And now select Recalbox. Batacera was originally a fork of Recalbox, so there are some similarities between them. Click next, then push this folder button at the top right. Go to the share partition, ROMs, and then OK. You'll also find all the systems that are compatible with Recalbox, and there are 72 in this list, but we're not using Recalbox. So check this box up here, then next. So for default settings, this will get game description, four images mix, and box 3D. Click next again, and we're ready to go. If you click the play button at the bottom right, it'll download the information we just saw for every ROM currently on your USB stick. We can see all systems is selected here. So let's have a look through some of the options. With the free account, you're only allowed one scrape engine, but giving a donation to Screen Scraper will speed up the process a lot. Got some more options in games list and metadata, we're going to be looking at media. Here we can choose what is downloaded per game. We can alter it by using these arrows at the bottom. For the most part, we recommend just using the default settings, but there are a lot to choose from, such as in-game screenshot, title screenshot, but some games don't even have a title screen, so you need to be careful about this. Once you're happy with your choices, press the play button on the bottom, then scrape. It will take a while, so it's probably best doing this before bed or doing it system by system by clicking on one of the boxes on the left and then play. And this will scrape all of the information for the Game Boy Advance. If you want to add videos to the mix, we can do that too. Just be aware it uses a lot more space than simple screenshots. As we only have a few Game Boy games, we're going to give them all videos. So check this box at the top. Now we're going to add a third option. We can do so by pressing this plus button here, and it'll give us a video. As we want a smaller video size, switch this over to Normalize Video. And that's it. Press play. Let's go back to our Astro. So now when booting up, we got the extra systems, as well as the screenshot, box art, and videos that we scraped. It takes around 3 seconds for a video to play, but it feels very sluggish in comparison to if we have no videos at all. If we compare it to our Game Boy Advance folder, we just fly through. If we don't like how this looks, we can change it a little. Press Start, and go down to User Interface Settings. Then go to Theme Configuration. And in here, we can adjust various options. For example, we're going to change the gameless view style. This is how our games look in each system. Let's just switch it to detailed and see how it looks. So you have the screenshot and details on the right, and the games list on the left. And it's really easy to navigate through your list. If you don't want to bother with screenshots or videos, you can always use basic mode. Simple is best. And if you want to turn off the background music, go to sound settings, and toggle front end music. And one more thing we'd like to recommend is to remove the bezels. That's the graphic on the outside of the screen. And while it can look nice, the game screen is smaller and it can cause some graphical glitching. Did you see it? It went flicker, flicker, flicker. And again. To remove this, go into your main Batacera screen. Push your start button and go into game settings. Go down to decorations. And when it says decoration set, change it to none. That'll fix the flickering as well as C64 games. Before we go over what works well, we want to show you the limitations that we ran into. First up, Commodore Amiga. If you ever find a system that doesn't run correctly, easiest thing you could do is change core. Push select, go down to advanced system options, and then change the emulator from here. For Amiga, we managed to get it working a little with UEFA ARM. And then it crashed out. Both Amiberry and Puey did not work. For Dreamcast and Naomi, Libretto Flycast would not load up, but the standalone did, upside down. And then it crashed. PSP started up, we had a rotated screen. You can hold select and push the bottom left button to get to the Puzzle main menu. Go to settings, then go down to display layout editor. Tap up a few times to get to the thing on the left, and change this to portrait reversed. Now the game screen should look okay. But you may notice that the controls are a bit wonky. The whole joystick is rotated 90 degrees. We tried changing this with no luck, but it doesn't really matter when the PSP runs this slow. Or crashes. When it comes to 2D games on the PSP, it handles them much better. Let's try some N64. Maybe not. So let's see the systems that do work. First up, Amstrad. A 
It's RST. Now for this, the screen is pretty small. Hold hotkey and bottom left button. Go into settings. Video. Scaling. Then if we set the scaling, aspect ratio to custom, right. we can make the screen much bigger. Now for some arcade games. Here's Truxton on MAME. Simpsons. Street Fighter Zero Two Alpha. Metal Slug. Moving on to consoles now. Here's Afterburner on the Master System. Earthworm Jim on the Mega Drive. Sonic CD on the Sega CD. Game Boy. Super RC Pro M. Sonic Advance on the Game Boy Advance. Mega Man 2 on the NES. Super Pan, Super Nintendo. R-Type, PC Engine. And finally, some PlayStation. Crash Bandicoot. Ridge Racer Revolution, one of my favorites. And Tekken 3. If you've not noticed by now, these buttons are not right. So hold select and push the bottom left button. And now go down to controls. Port 1 controls. And these actually look okay. If we switch them around here, it would fix the issue. But the underlying problem is that the main input is incorrectly configured. So hit back a few times, go into the main settings, input, then port 1 controls. Now we can reconfigure all the main buttons. Hit back a few times, resume the game, now we're sorted. If you want to shut down Batacera, press start and go to quit. From here you can shut down system. Once the light turns off at the top, switch it off at the back. If you want to see the stop menu again, unplug the USB stick and turn it back on. Is there any reason to use Batacera for games that come stock? Well there is. If you look at the latency, that's the time taken for the system to process and carry out your actions. If it's a very laggy machine, it'll be very difficult to play. We can compare with our special controller. This LED strip is connected to the button as well as a battery. As soon as we see the light, we can count frames to find out how many milliseconds of delay our setup has. We'll be using this Mayflash dongle for both firmwares to ensure controller compatibility. This is how it looks in full speed. But let's slow it down to count frames.
Bonanza Brothers doesn't even play anywhere near full speed on Batacera, but it still has lower latency. As you can see, a solid improvement to the latency. We hope this video helped with the on the Astro City Mini. As we play a bit of Doom 2, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandori, we make video guides like this, as well as video reviews, and fix them cheap arcade boxes, and the A500 Mini. If you'd help support our work, please jump on. We could simply like and subscribe this video. Or maybe give it a share. This has been Nimi Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!